You know what we got today, baby? Got a Mackie, not a Mackie thump. All right, welcome back everyone. I know it's been well over a year. Chaz and I have been very, very busy. Chaz got a new studio, um, which everyone will get a tour of eventually. We're not worried about that right now. I personally have been busy myself. I got a new house. I'm getting married. I mean, Chaz is also on his way to getting his pilot's license. There's just a lot going on. So again, we're sorry for the year lapse, but we're back again. And here we are to bring you such great content. It's gonna be so good, so good. That's gonna be cringy. Ah, uh, all right. The Mackie Thrash 215. It's apparently 1300 watts. Only costs about 350 bucks. I know on Amazon you can get two of them for about $700 currently, so we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna take it apart, we're gonna test it, we're gonna give it a sound test, we're gonna try and make a clip, we're gonna try and make it blow up. You know what we do. Welcome back to Two Dudes Audio. So, right off the bat, you got injection molded uh, styrofoam. Decent quality, it's not the stuff that you take out and it just kinda makes a mess everywhere, which is nice. Ooh, okay. We have a massive carry handle at the very top. All right, Mackie Thrash, 1300 watt, 215 top speaker. 1300 watts of raw power, it says. Built to rock. Built to rock. Legend, legendary. It's, it's serious. That's how serious it is. It's that serious! Wait, hold on. We're, oh, hold on. Ah. <laughs> I do actually kind of like this back plate amp. They have a proper lower intake and upper exhaust for the plate amp, which is actually kind of nice, so. All right, so this thing, in all honesty, has a 15 inch driver. It has a one inch titanium compression horn. It's supposed to be around 1300 watts, real power, real power. I'm expecting this to be around 500 watts RMS, maybe a thousand peak. Of course, we're gonna take the grill off. We're gonna see what the amplifier looks like. We're gonna see what the drivers look like. Things of that nature. Um, for 350 bucks, I mean, construction wise, it's really not that bad. It withstood my little intro. It does have these kind of green accent handles, which as you know, not a huge fan of, but here you can see 15 inch, 1300 watt powered loudspeaker. So they're really, they're really marketing the whole 1300 watts here. It is a decent sized plate amp. I mean, we're probably looking at like a 13, maybe 14 inch plate amp here. So it is a decent sized plate amp, which gives it enough real estate to maybe back that you know we'll see i really don't think for 350 bucks you can get 1300 watts i kind of go by the rule of thumb that every 100 watts you spend or every 100 watts i should say you spend about a hundred dollars so it's usually a dollar per watt so if you're not spending 1300 dollars on something that's 1300 watts it most likely won't do 1300 watts but Again, we'll see. Class D technology is kind of surprising some, sometimes, most of the time it's not, but again, we'll take it apart. We're gonna take a look at it. Did it come with a power cable? Wait, they did. <laughs> if they actually sold a speaker without a power cable, I would be very upset. That would be like an Apple thing. That would be. Oh, here's your iPhone. You know, $1,200 later, now you're gonna buy a $50 lightning cable with a charging brick. Chaz and I both just listened to this thing and you'll see that its strong points are, it does have very nice high end to it. Um, the compression driver in this unit is actually really nice. It's very smooth. Um, even when we were pushing this thing to clipping, it didn't sound half bad. The problem that we're definitely seeing with this sub, or not even subwoofer, but with this top speaker is that you will need a subwoofer. 
you absolutely will need it just because if you don't have a preamplifier to cut off <coughs> probably what would you say like 80 hertz roughly and down this thing just doesn't sound very good if you're trying to get full range sound out of this alone like if you were a dj and you had just two of these you might be able to get away with it if you're in a very small venue and when i say very small i mean like a 40 foot by maybe 20 foot room 20 people 30 people tops that's where this guy might shine pretty well people would probably have a good time the second you get over that size of a venue you absolutely need to cut the bass frequencies off of this guy put it more towards a dedicated subwoofer because i'm gonna be real this thing does not hit 55 hertz it doesn't even hit remotely close to 55 hertz it maybe does 75 80 hertz decently at loud volumes especially because this is claiming what like 100 and 125 db there ain't no way you're feeding this thing anything below 80 hertz and getting 125 db out of it it's it's yeah, not happening it, yeah there, there's no way <laughs> the mid-range and the, the high end on this speaker is actually really good it's it's a great top speaker in my opinion it does sound very good and it does give plenty of like impact factor without furthermore let's get into it before i read you the full specs if you want to get a So as you see, it actually is not a bad speaker, um, but to furthermore kind of solidify what we've talked about when it comes to how it handles lower frequencies, we're going to give you a frequency sweep from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. It's going to start at 20 hertz and go up, and you're going to see that you won't be able to hear this speaker until you hit about 70, 80 hertz. It just internally crossed over, and in terms of its literal own performance, it's just not meant to do anything below 80 or 70 hertz. So without further more, let's get to it. All right, so as you guys have seen, it's not a bad speaker. It really isn't as much as I'm trying to make fun of it and knock it. It actually is pretty decent. But other than that, I mean, the knobs feel good. Everything feels nice and clicky. The, uh, the inputs feel good. The, the power plug isn't terribly, you know, loose or anything like that. Everything feels pretty dang good on it. Like, I really can't complain too much. Um, my biggest complaint is just the simple fact that I'm not able to defeat any of the lower frequencies that are going to make this thing peak out prematurely. The second you have a heavy rap song on, a dubstep song, any kind of heavy EDM that has 50 hertz, 60 hertz and lower heavy bass lines, you're going to hear this thing peak almost immediately. Let's, uh, let's take it apart. It, it doesn't sound terribly hollow. If I'm gonna be honest, it doesn't sound bad and it doesn't feel bad either. Like it, it definitely doesn't feel cheap. Like I can't make this thing creak if I kind of like grab on it and twist on it. Get, let's get drilling. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so we couldn't figure out how to get this lid off. So I just kind of like, you know, bounced on it. And look at this, it actually came up. There we go. Oh. That actually doesn't look half bad. 
So we got the grill off. Here's the speaker. Doesn't actually feel half bad. It's decently stiff. The waveguide's actually really smooth. It's like all one piece. Look it is. That. that is definitely either a 3D printed or injection molded front baffle. Um, I also like how they kind of incorporated a little bit of like a waveguide slope at the bottom here. Um, they didn't do that up top because they said go screw yourself, but it just kind of reinforces the fact that this should be top mounted just because they don't expect anyone's ear level to be above this part of the baffle where they expect people's heads to be below the threshold of the cone. So, All right, so this is how this thing sounds out of a microphone. Um, this is the... SM58. Sure, SM58. The feedback isn't too bad. It really isn't. Um, as you can tell, I'm standing right in front of the speaker. The speaker isn't too loud though. Uh, if I were to change it though, you'll notice that it gets a little feedbacky at some points in the, uh, you know, uh, see right there. I mean, it does sound good. It kind of sounds like the RT100 we had by Harbinger. Uh, very rich, very natural. Nothing too crazy, nothing too peaky, but again, that may or may not be from the SM58 by Shure. They do have an incredible microphone. Oh, it's not too bad. There, let me, let me flip it over for y'all, simple folk. <laughs> it's not terrible. It's not great. For 350 bucks, I mean, at least do they have a little cover over the vent. The spider looks like a single layer basic spider. Look at speed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got spade connectors, my all time favorites. We have a sealed back. Oh, we have a sealed back amplifier. Sealed back amplifiers mean that the amplifiers get absolutely no airflow from the woofer mo movement. It's not a terrible. It's not a terrible speaker. I'll, I'll say that. If I had to give it a scale rating of one to 10, it's a solid six and a half, seven, even. And they even show in the book to hook this thing up to a mixer. Do not expect to go to a venue and have just a cheap MIDI controller with just a volume knob on it and expect to get far. This will not do it for you. That being said, we're gonna take apart the amp give you a peek at the amp and then we're gonna wrap this whole video up and maybe eventually give you a studio tour we'll see <laughs> I took off all the bolts for the amplifier let's take a peek see poo 1300 watts everybody power supply here uh, and your few MOSFET it's kind of weird this is a class D amplifier yet the way they mounted these transistors makes me think otherwise. 63 volts, 2200 microfarad, and it looks like for the main power supply we have 470 microfarads? <laughs> what? All right, so on that note, everybody, it's gotta save the drink. That has been the review of the Mackie Thrasher. Just get it over with. Doesn't matter. And then take this subwoofer. You would have probably one of the best 18 inch subwoofers for your money. We have a direct comparison between a replica of a JBL Eon and then we have an actual JBL Eon right here. Quality that I would almost expect out of like a hi fi subwoofer. Let's see what's in here.